View this video from the playlist to see the complete video content. I have already unpacked the Ultrafeed sewing machine and removed the case from its box and also removed the head from its styrofoam container. That process is pretty straightforward. Just cut the tape carefully and open your boxes and remove things. It helps to have someone help you remove the head because of its weight. Uh, once you have it removed, make sure that you put it on a sacrificial surface. Here we're using a cardboard so that the metal legs of the machine don't damage the surface of our table. Um, depending upon which machine you purchased, you'll either be installing the machine in our industrial carrying case or you'll be installing it in our uh, wooden base uh, for the Ultrafeed basic package. And uh, we're going to go through both of those processes, but for most of what I do here, it's going to be showing you how to install it on the hinge pins of the industrial carrying case. You will also get a number of additional supplies that are loose in your box, like the flywheel and belt cover and extra samples, foot control, etc. Just set those components aside. As we go through the video, you will see where they get used. To install the head in the case, the first thing we need to do is turn the machine on its back. Then we want to locate two set screws. And I'm pointing to one here and the other here. And I notice that those require a screwdriver slotted tool or a slotted screwdriver in order to loosen them. And we want to loosen those screws. And we just want to loosen them basically so that they're standing proud by about a quarter to three eighths inch. And then we want to lift our machine back up and we're going to look at the back of the machine and we want to look through the hole where the hinge pin goes and we want to make sure that the screw isn't poking up into that hole. And that one is clear as is that one. So I've released my screws enough that I am ready to put the head on the, uh, the pins of the case. But before we do that, the way we finish our machines, they're oiled very well before they're sent out. And we want to dry the machine down uh, to get any of that excess, excess uh, oil off the surface of the machine before we install it in our case. Set your case so that it is facing you with the logo forward. And then on the ends of the case are butterfly latches. And if you flip the latch open and twist it, uh, it will pop the latch. Do that on both sides and simply remove your case top. With the case top out of the way, we can see that the tray of the case has the two hinges that will go into the holes in the back side of the sewing machine. We will simply lift those pins up so that they hold at about 45 degrees. Sometimes they, they don't hold quite that well and you may need a helper uh, to hold the pins up for you. And it's also probably a good idea to have a helper to install the head anyway. But I've done this so many times that I generally can do it by myself. And lift your sewing machine head. And then what you want to do is you want to get one pin started and then locate the other pin and start it and drop the machine all the way back on the pins. Once the machine is back on the pins, you should test it by dropping it down in. Now we'll tilt our machine back, and it will rest like that, but you want to support it a little bit. And we'll take our screwdriver, and we are going to tighten the two set screws that lock the machine onto the hinge pins. These are the same screws that we, we uh, released previously. I'm having to sort of do it by feel, but I got that one nice and tight. And now we come to this one. With those tight, we can set the machine back down in. And that's really all there is to installing the head in the case. This device is a simple lock that keeps you from being able to tilt the machine back in its case. We're gonna leave that off for now. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to install the thread stand. Your industrial carrying case will have a hole right here that is designed for the installation of the integrated thread stand. If you have purchased the basic package, the basic case also has a hole for the integrated thread stand, but keep in mind that the integrated thread stand does not come with that package. That would be something optional that you would have to purchase. 
in either situation, the, uh, the integrated thread stand is installed the same way. The integrated thread stand comes with a, a wood insert, which is this gold metal portion, and I'm going to remove the, uh, the, set, the thumb screw from it, and it comes with an Allen wrench that fits in this wood insert. And all you do is start the wood insert in the hole here, and then use your Allen wrench to tighten this until the top of the wood insert is flush with the top of our tray. And don't over tighten it, just get it to the point where it's, it's flush. And uh, now you are ready to install the integrated thread stand. The threaded thumb screw gets threaded into the plastic of the base of the stand. And then once it is through, you can thread it into the insert and your thread stand is installed. That can swing into position when you put the case top on or into operating position when you're sewing with the machine. So we'll just slide that over to the side for now so that it's out of the way. While we're talking about thread stands, all of our machines come with a plastic-based thread stand, and uh, you'll find these parts on the side of the styrofoam that your sewing machine head uh, was inserted in. And then in the parts bag, you'll find a straight, shorter rod right here that has one coned end on it. And uh, these are the three parts that make up this thread stand. In, uh, assembly of this thread stand is quite easy, although if you have the integrated thread stand, I would just set it aside because you'll never use it. If you don't have it, then you do need to do this. Loosen the screw on the outer rim and make sure that the hole is clear. And our larger post will go in that, but let's start with the shorter post. The shorter post goes in the center, and it goes in so that the tapered end, you might think that goes down, but it does not. The tapered end goes up, and then you do need a hammer. We're going to use one of our heavy mallets here to pound that center post into the base of the thread stand. And you really do have to pound it in there, so uh, don't be gentle with it. It takes some pressure to knock that in there. And I would do it down on a hard concrete floor or something as well. And then this post simply goes into this position so that the, the loop hangs over the top of the post, and then you would tighten the set screw. And very simple thread stand. Then this sits behind the sewing machine, cone of thread led up to the sewing machine. And you can even bolt it down to your table if you want. Problem with this thread stand is they're fairly light and they have a tendency to fall over. And obviously it's not the best solution for a portable setup. The best solution for a portable setup is an integrated thread stand that can be positioned and left on the case. But you do get this one as standard. So that is the thread stand. Then we have one more thing to talk about, and I'm going to flip the machine around. And this is only for this industrial carrying case. And that is that our industrial carrying case now comes with a delicate fabric strap. And you'll notice that there are snap studs here at the front edge and at the back edge of the case. And this snaps on to these snaps, just straps all the way around here and snaps on. I usually put the logo tag to the back, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, when the case top is on, it sits in this position. When you're sewing with delicate fabric, and when I say delicate fabric, I'm talking about things that scratch or mar easily. So we're talking like uh, Strataglass or, or OC, um, clear vinyl, or anything that could be damaged by the sharp edges of the case. Put this in position and it will protect your fabric. Now the best way to do it is to put it on like I've done here so that it overlaps the bed of the machine a bit, lift the machine up, let the machine come down, and trap that strap in there. Now you have a nice soft edge for working your fabric. If you've purchased the Alterfeed Basic Package, the next one minute and 55 seconds of video will show how to build the base. After this portion of video, we'll continue to install parts onto the head. You'll find printed instructions inside the box that the base came in. First step, install rubber feet. Place screws through the center of the rubber feet, and then screw the feet onto the base at each of the four pre-drilled holes in the bottom of the base. 
Be sure the screws are tightened fully so they will not scrape your tabletop. Step 2. Install hinges. Flip the base up. Insert one hinge into the hinge cavity on the top of the wooden base. Place a screw through the hole in the hinge and screw into the pre-drilled hole provided to secure it. Repeat this process for the second hinge. Step 3. Install screw stop. This stop helps to protect the top of the wooden base when the machine is tipped back. There is no need for a kickstand with this base. Place screw through the countersunk washer and secure using the pre-drilled hole near the storage cavity. Step 4. Install your alter feed. Loosen the two set screws on the underside of the sewing machine head that hold the machine to the hinges. Do not remove the screws completely. On the base, tip the hinge post slightly upward. Lift up the sewing machine head and carefully guide the hinge posts into the hinge openings on the back side of the machine head. Tip the machine head back and use a stubby screwdriver with a medium head, which is typically not included, to tighten the set screws on the underside of the machine head. Here, we're going to use the smaller green screwdriver that's included with the head, and it works okay. This machine is shown with the Power Plus wheel and the belt cover already installed. We're going to cover the steps to do that very soon. Now we should install the spool pin, and again that's in your plastic parts bag, and there will be a short, maybe inch and a half uh, length pin with a couple of holes in it and a threaded end, as well as a red felt disc. Put the spool pin on the top of the machine in the threaded hole toward the front, and use your screwdriver to snug the pin in place. Once the pin is in place, put the red felt disc over top of it. This is your thread guide when you leave the thread from the thread stand to the top of the machine and then we'll cover threading later. But I also want to point out for home sewing, uh, you put your spool of thread on this over top of this post and it set it so it will spin clockwise as it unwinds while you're running the machine and then the spool turns on this uh, felt disc. Very simple thing to do and uh, you would do that and this is a good point, good time to bring up that even though we are working with the LSZ-1, our zigzag ultra feed sewing machine, everything that we're doing here would be done exactly the same way whether we're working with the LSZ or the red LS-1 straight stitch only ultra feed sewing machine. So don't feel like you're watching something you don't need to watch if you have our, our fantastic red LS1 sewing machine. So next we want to install the flywheel on the sewing machine. And you'll notice that the way the machine comes to you, the posi pin will be in a plastic bag and it's attached to in, a, in some manner like this. You want to remove that and remove it from the bag and set the posi pin aside. The other thing we need to do is get the belt removed. And to do so, take the bobbin winder spindle and kick it to the left and just simply uh, pull the belt off the sewing machine. And let's go ahead and set that aside. Now before we go any further, we need to install the belt cover. And you'll notice on the machine there are two screws that are pre-installed in the motor housing. We need to remove those screws in order to put the belt cover on. And these are fairly loose, so I'm just removing them by hand. Find your belt cover, but before we put the belt cover on, I want you to take your belt and I want you to position it over the, the small pulley of the idler pulley on the machine, as I have done here. If it pops off on you, it is okay to bring it back around and, and hook it over the bobbin winder spindle in some manner where it won't come off. And now we want to take those set screws, and this is a little challenging while you're filming because my head's probably going to get in the way. You probably noticed to put this on I'm using a different screwdriver. I find it's either best to use a magnetic screwdriver or one that has a fairly thick flat end so that it allows the screwdriver to hold the screw as you can see here. And you don't want to get these super tight, you just want to get them snug. If you go too tight you'll crack the plastic of the belt cover. And that's all there is to that. So our belt cover is in place. Now I'm going to get my belt out of the way, but make sure it still stays on the pulley. And I'm going to then remove the posi pin nut from the posi pin. And this is reverse threaded. 
So you can see I'm turning it clockwise to remove it. And we'll set that aside. And then we grab our Power Plus flywheel. Every ultrafeed sewing machine comes with the Power Plus flywheel. The Power Plus flywheel is what creates in a large part the massive amounts of slow speed power and control that you expect to get from your ultrafeed sewing machine. So it's a wonderful device. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold this belt out of the way as we slide the, actually I'm going to put the belt over the top, like so. And then I'm going to slide my Power Plus wheel on and I'm going to take the belt then from the back and I'm going to feed it up over the wheel and walk it around until it's in place. Now, all I need to do is take my posi pin nut and again, reverse threaded, so I'm spinning it counterclockwise to snug it and just snug it onto the machine and I have the drive system set up. Take, at this point, take your posi pin and put it in the keeper in the, in the middle of the posi pin nut. We'll talk about how to engage the posi pin to drive the machine later. At this point, we're just showing you how to install the wheel on the machine. But we do want to check for belt clearance at this point. So we want to make sure our, our belt cover is slightly adjustable and we want to make sure that we're not rubbing the belt against the belt cover anywhere and generally they're very easy to set and nothing wrong here. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the foot control and I'm going to flip our machine around to do that and we're also going to put the light on. Uh, I have two foot controls here in front of me. Your machine will only come with one. Obviously the US plug is going to be for our US customers. For our international customers, uh, we do have a foot control that has the, the German two round pin plug. Um, and if you live in a different country that doesn't take the two round pins, you can get an adapter uh, to easily plug that into your wall outlets. Regardless of which foot control you get, um, what you want to do is we'll take our wire tie off. This, this male end plugs into the socket that is on the machine. And you'll notice that it's keyed. There's a right angle cut here and an angle on the other end. Make sure that you get the angle in the right spot and then just simply push the connectors together with firm pressure. And that's all there is to connecting the foot pedal to the sewing machine. Ultrafeed Plus and Premium packages both come with our Flex 20 light. And the Flex 20 light can be purchased optionally with our basic package. This light is a great magnetic light. It generally gets attached right here on the end cover of the sewing machine and it's just magnetic. And then the cord can be led any number of ways across the back of the machine, however you like. And these clips, which we've already got one pre-installed, are just uh, uh, adhesive clips. You can install those and then use the wire ties that come with the, the light in order to secure the light cord to the machine. There are also uh, clips for using screws if you have a wood surface that you want to further secure the cord to. And if you want to attach it somewhere that is not magnetic, there is a, a, a very high bond 3M adhesive pad that can be used on the base in order to stick this to something if it's non-magnetic but typically we don't use that for the machine since it attaches so nicely to the left end of the machine where you can move the light exactly where you need light. All right, so ba our basic assembly is done. Our light's installed. I have pushed all of our cords into our, our cubby hole here and pushed our thread stand over top of it. And now I'll just take the foot control and put it in inside the arm of the machine and I'll tuck our light down out of the way. Let's spin the machine around, and we are ready to put the case top back on. But before we do that, we want to lift the machine up a little bit so we can free the strap, push the strap down around the end. And case top goes on so that the, the logo is to the front. And just get her in place. Secure our butterfly latch by making sure the hook is in the, in the loop and then twist until it tightens and flip the, the latch up. And we'll do that on both ends. And we are ready to carry our machine away. That is the basic assembly. Now we'll show you how to sew with it.